Okay, hi guys. Um, this is a video that once I uh, once I filmed, I wanted to upload immediately, um, but I didn't. I waited. I've given it about six days now uh, for the customer to uh, basically confirm with me that everything's fixed. So I was sent to this job with a uh, with a PCB to fit for an engineer who wasn't going to be able to make it on time. Um, so when I attended, I it, the PCB was meant to be fitted for an F24 fault that was intermittent and uh, only one engineer out of two, but on four different visits they actually ever seen the fault. Uh, so I attended with the board to fix this intermittent fault, but having prior experience with this boiler and this fault on an intermittent basis, um, I... I didn't want to, I'd done some tests before I fitted the board, after I fitted the board, and then after I'd done what I thought was going to fix it. So the history for me on this type of fault is that the uh, um, the first boiler I ever came across that had this, I never got resolved, and I'd done the PCB, the harness, the NTC, the transformer, and then the PCB again. I never got it fixed. Uh, the next boiler I came across, I'd done the PCB, the harness, and the NTC and the transformer as well. Um, to be fair, most of them parts uh, were from the first boiler, which was a couple of years before that. I'd, I swapped them in knowing that I'd had this problem previously and that I'd never got to the bottom of it. So on the second boiler, I refused to give up, basically. And I got it sorted. I found out what the problem was, and it's this will be the third boiler in my whole career I've seen with this problem and it would be the second one that I fixed. So I've got to go over some stuff with this. Um, so I'm going to just show you a image here of a schematic for a Valent Turbo Max Plus, okay? Yeah, I know I should cut my nails. Um, okay, so on this uh, schematic, so that was a picture of a single wire NTC, which is what the uh, Turbo Max Plus uses. Now, if you look at the schematic here, uh, Point number four, which is on the left-hand side, and it's the fourth digit down, that is the flow NTC, okay? And as you can see, that's on the red flow pipe that goes down to the diverter valve, which either sends heat through the plate or down, uh, down the flow pipe on the left-hand side there out to the heating system. So that number four, that single wire NTC, is the main temperature sensor for the boiler, okay? But it's only a single wire, so what I need to get you to understand with these is the single wire NTCs are exactly the same as two wire NTCs except the second wire is actually the socket that it gets wound into so that adapter on the pipe the pipe itself um, and it runs down through the chassis of the boiler to a wire that is bolted to the chassis that then goes back to the board so it uses the pipes and the chassis as the uh, as the other wire effectively okay so I'm just going to show you another image here and explain it okay so um, if you read the third paragraph down here it says do not use PTFE tape because it can create a seal of insulation uh, leading to an inc leading to incorrect readings the thread should be left dry now I picked up on that point and that's where this all started to make perfect sense to me so what they're saying there is that anything that prevents the metal thread of the NTC making good contact with the uh, with the copper uh, boss that it screws into will affect the reading. And that's when it suddenly tweaked for me, this is where my issue lies with this boiler. Okay, so I'll explain the fall in a bit more depth, but let me show you some of the wiring diagrams for the boiler and, and how the uh, second wire works. Okay, so in this image here, you'll see the left-hand bit is the display with the red, the yellow, and the green lights on it. The center section there, the rectangle, that's not quite in the picture, but most of it is, that's the main PCB. Now, the important part here is if you look to the bottom right there, it says NTC flow temperature sensor, and it says NTC return temperature sensor. So you can see the, uh, the color wires, the T and the BR, they are the, the wires that go up and clip onto these NTCs and you can see both the NTCs appear to be joined and go to the W which goes back to the boiler okay um, well W stands for white uh, the 
the T, I think it is. That's but that's basically a clear white. It looks almost like a um, a HT lead, and BR is brown. Um, but that white wire doesn't go to the NTCs. That white wire is just attached to the chassis, which you'll see in the video of the boiler, which you will see in a bit. Okay, so I just want to um, I just want to make sure this is clear on how this works to everyone. I've just got one more quick uh, shot to show you. This is a little bit out of focus actually, but I couldn't get a better one. Um, and then I'll get to the actual boiler in question. Okay, so this is the uh, the plug on the PCB. So if you look at number three is the flow NTC, then you have 11, which is an NTC on the return, and you have another 16 is an NTC on the return. Uh, they're both, one's for the actual primary return to the boiler, the other's actually on the return from the plate heat exchanger. Um, but if you look at, um, point 13 you'll see that that says NTC earth now that is the earth for all of them NTCs that's effectively the uh, second wire for all three of them NTCs which is generated through the chassis of the boiler and is what brings us to this uh, this problem on this boiler okay so here's the boiler in question a valent turbo max plus suffering with intermittent F24 so F24 going down to a logic level on the boiler is a temperature increase on the flow that is uh, unrealistic so it assumes the boiler is overheating or the temperature difference between the flow and the return widens sig significantly enough that the boiler thinks it's going to overheat um, so it blames a pump uh, low pressure um, you know poor circulation something like that but on a logic level an elect electronics level it's basically the the temperature of the ntcs okay is what causes it so I'm going to cut, I'm going to remove the voice over here so you can hear me and the, and the customer discussing this. So this may or may not be a PCB issue. Education, yeah? Is it doing something different now? Or? No, it's kind of. It's doing the same thing. Damn it, it's a, uh, just give it a sec. Can you turn that tap off and turn it back on for me, please? Turn it off and put it back on. Yeah. So in the first clip there, you may have missed the uh, the temperature on the display. It suddenly started jumping up and down quite rapidly. So I wanted to see if that was happening uh, before I fitted this PCB. The the engineer who had ordered this part uh, is a very very good engineer. So I, I wasn't, I, if I'm honest, it was very late. It was gone six o'clock at night. I didn't even read the notes. I, I just wanted to visually check the display before I fit the PCB in case it had this fluctuation in temperature. Now the fluctuation in temperature, if it was on an Ecotech, it is the PCB all day long. On a Turbo Max, it can be either or. So just bear that in mind. And by either or, I mean, it can be the PCB or if you're really unlucky, it'll be this issue that this boiler is experiencing. It's not doing it again now, it's working perfectly. <laughs> it's working perfectly again right now. So it's on and off, is it? Yeah. Give it a sec, it'll probably start again in a sec. So the thing is, for you, most of the time, this would just work. You wouldn't notice what this is doing here. The thing is, um, it, it does actually, sometimes it's really annoying, you know, when you're taking shower or whatever, it goes off five, six times, you know, and somebody needs to reset it and... Uh, yeah. And so, sometimes it works 10 minutes fine, 10 to 15 minutes. Yeah, it's working now fine. Oh, it's so annoying. I bet the moment that I've got the phone down, Time you reset the boiler, right? After two minutes, it happens, and you do, you've got to reset again. Yeah, it's doing it now. I've just done it there. I caught a bit of that on film. I just want to film it so I can show other engineers and give them a list of the things they need to check. Yeah. There's something on the display. It's not. Yeah, it's something on the display that. Yeah, we go. It's doing it beautifully. There's something on the display 
that gives the game away. Yeah, it's doing it brilliantly right now. But it takes patience because you've got to stand there looking at the display. And look, even me who knows what I'm looking for, I lost patience <laughs> and put my phone down, right? <laughs> yeah. Mm. You check that now, it's gone cold, yeah? Uh, I think it's getting colder, yeah? Yeah. yeah it's gone because the boiler's gone into a safety mode. S54. Right, it's I'm going to try. Yeah, don't, no, no, don't worry, you won't know what that is. Okay, so this next clip's going to run a few times, but um, what I want to explain here is that the, uh, the, the, the second boiler I had with this issue, the way I actually repaired it or proved my like thought process was I put jump leads across the, the pipe there above the top of the diverter valve to the chassis of the boiler. I put a jump lead and the fault went away overnight. And uh, what I determined it to be is see that diverter valve, that green corrosion there, that's happening at the diverter valve and at the uh, the main heat exchanger. So the the NTC is losing its earth path, it's losing its second wire. So if you imagine the pipe, the diverter valve and that pipe then go down onto that chassis is the second wire. And that second wire effectively is breaking down because of poor electrical conductivity through it. So all I had to do here to get rid of the fault for the customer was I unscrewed that screw. Uh, but let me just explain something. I'm not in my usual van. I'm in a courtesy van. So I literally didn't even have any cable. That is a bit of old harness off a Worcester boiler. Um, that Because uh, I haven't got jump leads. Otherwise, I would have done it with jump leads. So undone that screw, put that there, put one end of the wire under that screw. The other end of the wire, I simply cleaned the pipe above the diverter and I needed some means of attaching that to the diverter pipe. I, I didn't know how, I needed something. And this is what I came up with, because uh, it's the only thing I had. So there's that under that screw, <sighs> and it's a valent uh, main heat exchanger clip. And I've simply used that to hold that cable across there to bridge out all of that, and uh, it, it fixed it. The boiler then, ran stable the whole time. I actually tested this boiler then for probably more than, I would say more than 15 or 20 minutes. Um, and I had no issues with it again. It never went into S, uh, S54, it never went into F24. And the, uh, the customer has got back to me today to say it's fixed and they can't believe that that's what's fixed it. And there's only one other person, well I've told engineers about this since, no, I've never filmed it. I was able to show one other engineer, and that was a guy at British Gas, who was quite surprised. And so what this shows you is sometimes the boiler will send you right down the wrong path. So F24, you'll be looking for heat-related issues. You'll be doing plate heat exchangers, pumps. Uh, you'll be saying it needs a power flush. But you have to get down to logic level. What does the boiler... What does the boiler assume has happened for it to put the F24 and that is it assumes the NTCs are reading correctly and have suddenly seen a huge increase in temperature that isn't viable unless the water's stalled and restarted or something along them lines so to fix this boiler is the only way to fix it is to spot this tiny little fluctuation in temperature on the display like an Ecotech does when it's got the intermittent F61, F62, which I've also got a video about. Um, except on this boiler, it's not the PCB. Now, I should have just went in here and gone, it's not the PCB, and stuck the link wire across to prove it and whatnot. But I chucked the PCB in there anyway, because honestly, I was hoping just to put it in, turn the boiler back on, it's all fixed, and go home. Um, however, that didn't happen. So, But I've done this all... I done my fags. It was ten millibar burner pressure. It was like zero point zero 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 eight, um, and it worked. And it, it hasn't broke down. And I'm as amazed as the customer. And I'm glad I got to film it for you guys. You know, it's really good. All right, so far so good. I'm gonna stop filming because it's hurting my hand. But <laughs> so I just thought I'd show you this again. If you look at the display here, this one it's doing it really, really obviously. See that how much that's jumping up and down. And I'll show you this clip twice, but you can see that's just unfeasible for a boiler to be able to jump up 10 or 12 degrees in a, in a matter of seconds, yeah? Or not quite 10 degrees, but you know, that just can't happen. 
So, and it does do it in the very first clip that I show you. It's just a bit more subtle. So if you want to go back and watch that, you'll see what I mean. That first clip, it does do it. It's more subtle and that's how it generally presents itself. So uh, yeah, good luck with that. If you ever come across that, let me know because that's a really tricky fault. Good luck, guys. There's something on display that, here we go, it's doing it beautifully. There's something on display that gives the game away. Yeah, it's doing it brilliantly right now.